Hello everyone, welcome back to SI Technologies. Today we are going to discuss one of the interesting as well as important topic, learning Databricks with AI, how it is going to help you in day-to-day -day world. For example, sir, today you are working in Databricks. Okay, everybody is moving towards cloud, right? From on-premises to cloud. Whenever you are going with the cloud, right? Majorly like, you know, what it is going to happen? According to the requirement, people are going to choose different set of tools, different set of clouds. But when it comes to big data processing perspective, majority of the people are going towards Databricks. <clears throat> In the previous classes also, I have clearly explained how you are going to create a community edition account as part of as part of my series Databricks playlist by Spark. So I have clearly mentioned how to create a community edition account as well as how to read CSV files. And then couple of like, you know, specifically how to select, how to filter, how to transform, how to DDL also, how we can perform also, I have explained. Now, today, what extra you are going to explain as part of this particular thing. So first, we'll try to understand it. So how we are going to utilize AI capability as part of the database, how we are going to use the AI and how we can perform these things, whatever we, which I'm highlighting here, SQL, Python, as well as PySpark, how we are going ahead and how we can go ahead and we can utilize AI capability to work with SQL, work with Python, work with PySpark. So first we'll go to Databricks. Let's get into Databricks. So here there are two things here. If you see right, which I mean here, if you go to here, community cloud, okay, which I have created cluster, but at the same time here, what it is there as yes, part of it, this is the not a community cluster. This is the nothing but it's a paid one. It's a paid. It's nothing but I have subs I have taken as a subscription and then I have created the here you can see this is this is the Azure portal in that Azure portal one of the just I have mentioned AD 40 LPA one of the workspace which I have created and I have launched the workspace then after that what I have done I created one folder database with AI once you what is the difference between community and here enterprise so nothing but it's a kind of paid one. There are additional capacities which we, which they are going to enable as part of the as part of this. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to I'm going to create a notebook, very simple Databricks notebook. I have created here notebook. Then what I'm asking here, okay, Databricks with AI. So I'm doing just it's a kind of you know just a very very simple thing I'm doing. I'm renaming the notebook Databricks with AI. Now what is the next thing which we are going to talk about it? First, we'll talk about it, SQL. How we can talk about SQL. Let's take very simple, like how to read the tables. Okay, just we can take it a very simple example. Read the employees table. How we can utilize the AI. So if you can go here, if you can go here, there is an assistant. Okay, there is an assistant which is available. At the same time, when you are going ahead and creating a, creating a notebook, what it is available, when you create a notebook under that each cell. So I'm creating new shell here. So here, if you observe here, there is a generate option, generate with AI. Okay, even you can press, you can press control I also. Just click on this. How to read the, read the table. Read the table and display the data. Display all columns. Just I'm giving this. Okay, once I have given this prompt, automatically what it is going to generate, it is going to generate, you can click on generate, automatically what it is going to give you, it is going to run, it is going to give you the Spark code. This is the Spark, but what I want it, I want it in SQL. Okay, I want it in SQL. So this is by default, it is going to run, it is going to generate the SQL. Now you can specifically ask, you can specifically ask, read the, read the SQL table, SQL table or just you instead of that way, okay, just you can change it here. You can change it here. Read the, read the table, read the table and display all columns, all columns, all columns. This is the just simply you, it is going to generate it. Now you can see select star from table and just you can see you can replace the table name here. So automatically what it is going to happen, you need not to write the code. By default, A will generate for you. And at the same time, now next question, let's go to here. How to filter the data? Just like, you know, 
consider it you can you can always change this particular thing okay sql okay i have a table i have a table which contains a lot of row just i have a table i have an employees table just assume that employees table and filter the data based on based on dep department id column department id column You can see here, right? You can see, is it generating the, is it generating? It's straightforward, it is generating. Whatever the value which you wanted to go ahead and you wanted to do that, automatically it is going ahead and it is generating. So you can go ahead and you can execute it straight away. And next thing is, just I'm going ahead and I'm going to create it a one more important thing. Here you can again select the SQL. Now here, what I, what I, what I want it, I have, I have department ID, department id sorry i have a department table and employee table and and get me the get me the department id department id which does not which does not have single employee it does not have any employees just write it up like this and automatically what it is going to generate it is going to generate the sql you can see here you can see here, this is the way it is going ahead and it is going to help you. It's nothing but it is going ahead and it is going to help you day in, day out. It is going ahead and it is going to help you day in, day out. This way you can generate and you can utilize the code. You can utilize your day to day. So even you can give, you can go ahead and you can write the prompt in a better way. Automatically it is going ahead and it is going to give you. Even while you are writing, you can even mention the table names and column names automatically it is going to and it is going to do that if you know the sql concepts if you know the functionality just you can take the help from this ai and then you can utilize the productivity of yours it is going to be changed a lot now sir this is fine sir now sql is fine now let's be let me go to the python you mentioned sql right so filter also join also i have explained how it is going to generate this now what about the what about the python so i'm just I'm just giving a very, very simple thing. Python here, create a variable x and assign the value is 100. Just I'm asking, create a variable x and assign the value is 100. Just I'm giving very basic thing here. Just it is going to generate it and it is going to give you. This is the accept. Now straight away you can see here, it is going here and it is going to work. Now at the same time, next thing is, okay, next thing is what you can do create a function which takes two variables a and b and return the addition of the value same thing you can just create a create a function which takes two variables a and b a and b and which takes two parameters not variables which takes two parameters always remember variables and parameters a and b and output should be output should be addition of the addition of the addition of the a and b value b value and b value addition of a and b value value and you can return the output return the output so you can mention this just i'm writing it up some random you can see here you can see here this is the simplest thing now, what I'm going to write it up next is generate another another scenario. Create a function which reads CSV file using pandas and filter the data based on the specific column, return the data, another data frame. So you can write it up. Create a, create a function, create a function which reads the CSV file and using pandas, using pandas, Consider it read the employee CSV file so that it will take it up context. Employees CSV file, employees dot CSV file, and 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 create a data frame, create a data frame, and and create a data frame and filter filter the data based on the department ID based on the department ID department ID equals two equals two. Then and then and then return the return the final data frame. Just I'm showing you how easy it is going to and it is going to 
generate the things. So now you can see here, you do you need to like, you know, depend on anybody, just it is going to be creating a function which takes file path. Okay. And then it is going to, it is going to read the CSV, spark.read CSV directly. It is using the, when I say data frame, it is using the, what? It is using the spark data frame and then flatten and df dot filter and return the flat and df filter df. And once it is done, once it is taken, then display that result df, result df. So this is the way it is going to run. It is going to do that. Now we can go with the PySpark. So here, let's go with the PySpark here. Let's go with the PySpark here. So here, what I'm saying, read the CSV file and create a data frame. So first thing is, write it up like this. Read the CSV file. CSV file and create a data frame. Very simple. Okay. Create a data frame. You can see here, straight away it is going to it is going to read. So what you have to change? You have to change this path. Okay. The remaining things automatically it is going to take care. What it is taking here? Spark.read.csv. And it is taking the file, file path where that particular file path. And it is telling first row is header. And it is going to and even it is inferring the schema also. Schema means it's a kind of, you know, what kind of data, what is the data type also? It is going to and it is reading it out. Now, what is the next thing? Read the CSV file and infer the schema. So already it is taken into picture here, which is already header equals to two and infer schema also. It is going to and it is going to generate it. Now, sir, this is fine, sir. Now, what about the read the JSON file? How we can read the JSON file? Just you can mention read the JSON file. Read the JSON file and display the data. Display the data. So you can see here, you can go ahead and you can utilize this particular thing. Directly you can go ahead and you can see file path, spark.read.json and displaying the data. So this is the way you can go ahead and read the multi-line JSON file. Generally JSON file is going to have like this. Okay. So it is going to it is going to have like key value pay. Okay. Name. Here, you are going to have Ravindra, okay? And then here you are going to have comma and ID equals to, you can mention ID equals to, just you can mention triple one, just like that it is going to have it. If you have multi, like this also, this is the single line JSON. Everything, entire JSON will be available in a single line. So this is the one way of JSON. Another side, another side of it, what it is going to happen, same data, whatever we have it, now it is going to, it is going to be like this. It is nothing but a multi-line JSON, multi-line JSON. If you wanted to read, again here come up, next value, next row, which is going to be available. So in, in this scenario, what it is going to happen, what you should be aware of it, like, you know, you should be able to read this multi-line JSON also. How you can do that? Very simple. Okay, just come here and you can ask how to read the multi-line JSON. Just you can ask multi-line JSON. Okay, then automatically what it is going to read? It is going to and it is going to mention that this is the data frame. So it is telling this is the file path, multi-line multi -line JSON file. And then it is going to tell you option you have to give it. Okay, what is the option? Option equals to multi-line equals to true. And you can give the JSON. So additionally, you have to go ahead and you have to do that. This particular option you have to mention that. Now, what is the next thing which we can take it up? We can take it up another scenario. Okay, what is this here? How to read the parquet file? Okay. How to read the parquet file? Parquet file and display the data. And display the data. Display the data. So automatically it is going to generate the data. So here you can see spark.read.parquet. And I'm asking another scenario is how to read the database okay just i'm giving you one example here just you can mention here how to read the azure sql database okay i'm giving just example here just it is going to and it is going to mention clearly the code entire code it is going to and it is going to mention this what is the host name what is the database and what is the port by default it is going to take the port also and then you are forming the jdbc url based on the details and then you are going ahead and you are going to give the username password and this azure sql driver and once you have given what is the query which you wanted to execute it you can go ahead and you can execute it this is the another 
another thing. So do, do I have, did I provide this code entire code? No, right? It is provided by the AI. So next thing is what you can do, how to read the how to read the ORC file. ORC file. So you can write it up like this. Automatically, what it is going to give you? It is going to it is going to give you in detail like this. So this is the way you can utilize uh, AI is your AI is AI is your friend. Okay. And whenever you are having any issues, or you, if you wanted to go ahead and if you wanted to find some issue, especially with the especially with the things. Suppose, sir, I don't know some of the concepts. Suppose, for example, somebody said me, I am a being a QV. Somebody said me, or just it's a kind of you know one of the word they have used. Okay, so they have asked me, they have told me DBFS. Okay, they have asked me DBFS. So you can come to here. Click on assistant and click here and mention, okay, mention that what is DBFS, okay, what is DBFS and what is DBFS, what is the reason for, what is the reason for using DBFS. So you can mention like this, okay, it's a kind of, it's a kind of, you know, questionnaire you can ask. So what it is going to mention? So it is going to it is going to mention DBFS is nothing but a Databricks file system, which is nothing but it works as a local file system. Okay, local file system like that you can learn your day to day day to day. Even if some something developer has been said to you, okay, if you are not aware of it, come here and just take this particular concept, whatever the whatever the cons whatever the keywords which they are mentioning, just to go ahead and search it here and read it you will be able to you will be able to learn a lot so this is the way you can go ahead and you can utilize ai capability here so in this particular video i don't want to create lengthy videos just i'm going ahead and i'm going to show you how to create it in the coming video i'm going ahead and i'm going to execute the code and i'm going to come up with a bit complex complex scenarios also i will show you how to execute it that's it for the day if you Hope if you liked it, this particular video and please do subscribe as well as comment and as well as share with others who are learning this database. Thank you. Have a great day ahead.